In this video, I take some of the tools from the last few lectures and I apply them to show where the supply curve comes from. You may recall from the last video, lecture 20, where we derived the cost curve graph and showed why we get these U-shaped curves and how come the marginal cost curve looks this way, average variable cost, and average cost curve look this way. You may also recall that in lecture 18, we discussed the equimarginal principle. As a review, the equimarginal principle is that if an activity is worth pursuing at all, you pursue it until marginal benefit equals marginal cost. So, we have a marginal cost here. So, how about we think about applying the equimarginal principle to this setting? So, suppose that you are a firm and you're asking yourself, what is my marginal benefit for producing a good? Well, if the price doesn't change, your marginal benefit uh, for producing one more unit of quantity is just the price that you can get for that good. Because then you don't give anything up on the previous units you sold, and you just get that price. Now, if you're a firm and you know that if you produce more units, it's not going to affect the price, that's what we call a price-taking firm, you know that you get marginal benefit equal to the market price. So, what does a price-taking firm do when it chooses its quantity? It just applies the equimarginal principle. It sets the price, which is its marginal benefit, equal to its marginal cost. So, if we think about the price, let's take a price like P1. What we can do for this firm is we just keep producing units. There's that first unit, second unit, third unit, fourth unit, so on and so forth, all the way over until that last unit costs just as much as the price to produce. And if that is the price, that is the quantity that this firm should provide. Now, what about a price like P2? Well, then the firm just does the exact same thing. It equates the price to marginal cost. And what we start seeing is that this marginal cost curve starts to resemble what we would think of as a supply curve. I give you a price, and we want to know what this firm is going to supply. Well, that's going to be just over here at the marginal cost curve. And we can think about this as our supply curve. It turns out that what we get is that we can go all the way down to the minimum of the average variable cost curve, and that's going to be where our supply curve is. I give this firm a price, go over to the marginal cost curve, and that's the quantity. Now, one thing to note here, it is not true that the marginal cost curve is the supply curve. Keep in mind that the marginal cost curve, I give you a quantity, and it tells you how much that last unit costs. It is cost as a function of quantity. On the other hand, supply is quantity as a function of price. So technically, mathematically, the supply curve is the inverse of the marginal cost curve, just so long as it's worth producing at all. And as we'll talk about in future videos, it, you'll see that it's worth producing in the short run when the price is above average variable cost. And in the long run, firms will get out of the game if, if the price isn't above average cost. But that's a whole other story. But as you can see, this will tell us quite a bit about firm supply decisions. The next step is to go into an industry framework where we have multiple firms and we can think about uh, how to go from one firm to many firms in an industry and how to get an industry supply curve.